Hey everybody, Space Wizard here. So, the last of the Old Gods from the Whispers of the Old Gods expansion, Yog saron has been revealed. He's a legendary 7-5 for 10 with a battle cry that casts random spells on random targets for each spell you've cast this game. This is obviously one of the more difficult cards to effectively review from the set, so I'm going to be dedicating this entire video to drawing up some statistics and analyzing this card. Somewhere on the screen right now and in the description of this video, I've included a link to a written companion guide that includes more information than I can get across in this video. Going forward, it's important to keep in mind that cards with Overload will not overload your hero when cast with Yog saron Cards like Lock and Load that trigger when you cast a spell will not activate if the spell is cast with Yog saron and Choose One cards like Power of the Wild will have a random outcome chosen for you when cast with Yog saron First, I'm going to go over your percentage chance of casting different types of spells. Since I'm mostly concerned with constructed ranked play, I'm only taking into account cards that will be playable in standard. Quick note though, I wasn't quite sure how to handle the different random outcomes for choose one cards, so these percentages that I'm about to list might be something like 1% or less off, but no more than that. Going in order of highest to lowest percentage, risky control spells like Fireball can hit enemies as well as allies and will often deal damage. Safe control spells like Assassinate can only target enemies. Probably useless spells like Deadly Poison will often just fizzle because of their prerequisite. Summoning spells like Animal Companions summon minions. Risky buff spells like Blessing of Kings can target allies as well as enemies. Card draw spells like Arcane Intellect draw you one or more cards. Risky board control spells like Hellfire hit allies as well as enemies. Spells that add cards to your hand like Thought Steel generate new cards instead of drawing them from your deck. Safe buff spells like Power of the Wild can only target friendly minions. Safe board control spells like Flame Strike can only hit enemies. Control draw spells like Starfire control the board and draw you one or more cards at a time. Healing spells like Holy Light restore health to allies or enemies. Face damage spells like Mind Blast only deal damage to the enemy hero. And strictly bad spells like Astral Communion will just always be bad for you. So with these statistics, I want to figure out what we can expect yogg saron to do on average, when it's best to play yogg saron and what kind of deck, if any, we should play him in. Probably the most important thing to realize about these statistics is that every time yogg saron casts a spell, these percentages stay the same. You will always have about a 20% chance of casting a risky control spell, and you'll always have about a 6% chance of casting a risky board control spell. So the more spells you cast, the more likely it is that everything on the board is going to be destroyed, because you're eventually going to cast a spell like Twisting Nether, or simply destroy everything one by one with spells like Fireball. What this means is that in decks that cast a high number of spells, say anywhere from 20 to 30, assuming you've played every other card in your deck, yogg saron can essentially be treated as a full board clear. The more spells you cast with him, the more consistent his effect will be. This comes with a few notable downsides, however. First, because there's a 10% chance that each spell Yogg casts is going to draw you a card, casting too many spells will put you at a disadvantage in a fatigue matchup. Second, if you summon any minions with Yogg, it's very likely that one of the following spells you cast will destroy them. And third, once you've cleared the board, Yogg himself will be the only minion left for the spells he casts to target. On the opposite end of the spectrum, playing yogg saron with a low number of spells, say less than 10, will often be too random for you to accurately assess what's going to happen. You could just as easily clear the board as you could destroy your own yogg saron and not even touch a single enemy minion. So basically, the idea here is that the more behind you are on board, the more spells you want to cast to guarantee a board clear. And the more ahead you are, the less spells you want to cast. Since you're more than likely only going to be playing yogg saron in a control deck, this sort of limits him to being a potentially strictly better Deathwing. You just want to make sure that you're not casting something like 30 plus spells with him and going totally overboard so that you can keep the self-inflicted damage to a bare minimum. I personally think somewhere around 15 spells will be optimal with yogg saron So aside from clearing the board, what makes yogg saron potentially better than something like Doom is the extra value you can get from him. There's an 8.8% chance to summon a minion with him, a 7.4% chance to draw a card, a 4.6% chance to safely buff a minion, a 2.3% chance to deal face damage, and a 5.1% chance to add a card directly to your hand. Altogether, that's a 28.2% chance for something strictly good to happen that isn't removal. And that's not even taking into account most of the secrets that you can create. So assuming you don't clear your own board with the spells you're casting, you're looking at a pretty big swing in advantage. So at his worst, Yogg is a board clear that will add some cards to your hand, and at his best, Yogg will clear your opponent's side of the board and majorly swing the board in your favor. Granted, there's a 0.5% chance that Astral Communion will totally ruin your day every time Yogg casts a spell. 
Now, something interesting to make note of is that playing Yogg Saron on an empty board can actually be pretty good. A decent number of spells that would kill Yogg are also just as likely to hit you or your opponent, and at the same time, all the buffs in the game are guaranteed to hit Yogg. Now, there's still a pretty decent chance that he'll get blown up anyways, but if you're dealing with relatively few spells, say 15 or less, it can actually be very worthwhile to play Yogg Saron on a completely empty board. However, if you have the option, you should still play him when you're behind since that's guaranteed to get you some value. So to recap, Yogg Saron should be best either when you're behind on board or when the board is completely empty. This leaves us with the question of what kind of a deck he can fit into. Obviously, since one of the conditions for him to be good is that you must be behind, and he costs 10 mana, and you need to have casted a fair amount of spells to guarantee some kind of value out of him, he's pretty much restricted solely to control decks. Ideally, this would be a control deck that doesn't draw very many cards, so that any cards you draw with Yogg Saron wouldn't put you at a disadvantage when and if you go into fatigue. Alternatively, you could aim for a control deck that doesn't plan on going into fatigue at all, and draw as many cards as you want with Yogg Saron. Since we haven't seen the full Old God set yet, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to determine if Yogg Saron is going to be viable in standard. I can still make a guess as to what kind of a deck he would work in, however. Grinder Mage is a full-on mage control deck that has sort of worked in the past, and with the new Kabbalist Tome card, you will no longer have to draw into your deck to gain card advantage, while at the same time loading up on spells that could potentially power up Yogg saron Control Paladin, with its near-infinite healing from Forbidden Healing and Ragnaros Lightlord, is also a very strong contender for a solid Yogg saron build, as even if you force yourself into fatigue before your opponent, you would still be likely to outlast them anyway. Ways. Overall, I have very high hopes for Yogg Saron, and I feel if the meta becomes slow enough that you can afford to run a strictly late game board clear, then he'll definitely see play in at least one spell oriented deck. That's it for this week's video, guys, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'll be back next week with another new video, but until then, you can check out hearthhead.com or either of its social media pages for all sorts of Hearthstone related content. See you next time, everybody.